In November 1992, paleontologists from the San Diego Natural History Museum were conducting routine monitoring of a construction site on State Route 54 here in San Diego, when field paleontologist Richard Cerruti spotted several fossil bones and portions of a tusk. It took 22 years to piece the story of these fossils together, and the picture it reveals just might change everything. As Cerruti explored the site with Dr. Tom Demeray, they found fragments of distinctive molars showing that they had discovered the bones of a mastodon. Well, we had evidence of isolated molars, but to find a partial skeleton was really exciting. You're out monitoring these projects, sometimes weeks on end. Maybe you not, may not find anything in the lap. When the bones show up, you get really excited. I always get really excited. In some discoveries, I go home and I can't even sleep. I'm psyched up so much. But something was puzzling. Many of the bones were strangely fractured or missing entirely. And there were several large stones that seemed out of place in the surrounding fine-grained sediments. To Richard, this was starting to look not like a paleontological site or a fossil site, but instead like an archeological site, like the preserved evidence of human activity. Everything from the boulders to the femur heads together, one of the units had two complete ribs and two complete vertebra, and one long bone with this big end packed in it. Uh, God, there's, there were so many things that not one, not two, not three, not four, the turf tusk standing vertical. The, the arrows come, started pointing more and more and more towards human activity. As work on the site continued, questions about its age remained unanswered. At the time, the oldest evidence of humans living in North America came from sites that are around 14,000 years old. But mounting evidence suggested this site was much older possibly dating to long before any humans were thought to have arrived on the continent. The existing paradigm at the time was that humans had arrived in the New World less than 15,000 years ago. And, and, and given the fact that we were in deposits much older than that, we didn't even consider that possibility. And it wasn't until we saw these conflicting lines of evidence preserved in the sediments that we were looking at that we thought, well, maybe humans are responsible for this unusual pattern that we're seeing at this site. The first step to solving this riddle was to confirm that the site was, in fact, an archaeological site. Dr. Steve Holin had the expertise to help. Using the femur bones of recently deceased elephants, Holin had conducted two separate experiments in which he demonstrated that a stone used as a hammer causes fresh limb bones to fracture in a distinctive way. No known geological process or animal scavenging produces the same fractures in bones. In 2008, when Holin first traveled to San Diego to study these specimens, he confirmed the same breakage patterns. So when I first came to San Diego to look at the Cerruti site material, uh, I looked at the fractured bones and then I looked at the rocks, which was something we'd never seen before at our sites where we have the hammers and anvils. And I was quite surprised at the evidence that I was seeing in front of me because I realized that it was very old and it went against everything that I'd ever been taught. It went against everything I thought I knew. I thought humans had been in the New World maybe no more than 30 or 40,000 years old. And this obviously was much, much older than that. So I was in basically a state of shock, mild shock. I mean, this, this was the most surprising and shocking thing that had ever happened to me in my scientific career. Furthermore, the San Diego site had five large rocks that could have been used to produce the breakage. The broken bones were concentrated in two separate clusters, each around one rock. The other large rocks lay nearby. Could these have been used as tools? To help answer this question, the team consulted Dr. Richard Fulliger, an expert in use wear features on stone tools. Richard compared the impact and wear marks on the stones found at the San Diego site with other stone tools. Sure enough, the large stones showed the same abrasions, fractures, and scars that only occur on stones used as hammer stones and anvils. No known geological process produces the same patterns of wear. Essentially, we're looking for diagnostic traces of use, distinctive marks on the stone that we can match up with the marks on the bone and we can match up with the marks on the stone anvil underneath. 
And the, the kind of marks or, or traces of use that we're looking for include a flake that's actually chipped off the anvil. And we have that sort of evidence. It might be a couple of inches across. And we're looking for crushing and pitting um, and scratch marks at different levels of magnification. And when we put them together, the, the three bits of evidence, the marks on the stone, the bone and the anvil underneath, we have diagnostic indications of exactly how these artefacts have been used. And we, we call these stone tools as distinct from just a manufactured stone artefacts. These stones have actually been used. A clear picture was starting to emerge of two distinct areas where early humans were using rocks to break bones and teeth. As we considered the patterns that we were seeing, um, we thought, could there be alternative explanations? I mean, could it have been a flood or a mud flow? Holin, who has studied sites where this happened, says no. At other sites, gravity sorted bones by density and size. This wasn't the case here, where everything from small molar fragments to large rocks were distributed, unsorted, around the site. The researchers were unanimous. They had uncovered an archaeological site containing portions of an extinct mastodon. Having reached this conclusion, one critical question remained. How old is this site? In 2011, almost two decades after the mastodon's discovery, advances in technology provided the answer the team was looking for. Tom Demaray sent several of the mastodon bones to Jim Pacey's, who used state-of-the-art radiometric dating methods to determine their age. We conducted hundreds of analyses on the specimens sent from the museum, and we came to the conclusion that they were broken while they were fresh, and that had to be about 130,000 years ago. What does this mean? It means that early humans were living in North America at least 115,000 years earlier than previously thought. The Ceruti Mastodon site completely reframes our understanding of human adaptations and human, human abilities to get to new continents. So this is very exciting research and um, it, it just completely changes everything about early humans in North America and the research that needs to be done to find out more about these people. Who were the humans at work at this site and how did they reach North America? Were they an early failed attempt to colonize a new part of the world? Where are the other sites that show human activity in North America that are as old as this one? Where else should scientists look for evidence? Asking questions is at the heart of scientific discovery. Science is always seeking the best explanation that fits the evidence when new information is uncovered, no matter what we thought was true before. Fossils tell stories. This is not the end of this story, but simply the beginning.